Hello, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon's session about intellectual property rights on the hypergrid and in the metaverse in general. My name is Maria Korolov. I'm the editor and publisher of Hypergrid Business. And here with us today, I'm the founder of a major commercial grid and the founder of our biggest online content sharing site for OpenSIM. Intellectual property rights are a subject of a lot of discussion and have been talked about in other panels, uh, both today and yesterday. Is there enough content protection for virtual content in OpenSIM? Too much? Not enough? One thing that everyone can agree on, however, is, is that OpenSIM users need and deserve a wide variety of useful and engaging content. So here to talk first is Vanish, uh, who's been living in Second Life since 2007 and in OpenSIM since 2009. He creates items, writes tutorials, does talks, manages communities, and runs his own grids. And he's, to me, he's most famous for OpenSim Creations, a site where anybody can upload content, original content, and distribute it under a Creative Commons license for the general public to use on any grid. He's also a singer, guitarist, and songwriter. He's been writing songs for 15 years and has released four albums. Vanish, would you like to um, start off this discussion by talking about your take on intellectual property and content rights? I would like to. <laughs> um, how much time do I have? <laughs> <laughs> not enough, not enough. Not enough. Okay, um, basically, sure. basically, I would say um, uh, I don't like the word content to, to start with because that kind of looks at it from the perspective of the uh, the the people who uh, benefit from it, and that's usually not the artist. I prefer to to speak about creations. And um, I founded Open Some Creations with the with the premise that uh, creations for Open Sim users should be easily available. They should be downloadable, and they should be able to be imported into any grid, including people's own standalones that they run at home or wherever they want to. Um, so to make creations, uh, access to creations easy, free, and convenient, that's pretty much the premise. Full stop. OK. And, and so where do you stand on the whole on the whole, is there enough or is there too much protection for content right um, now in open source? I'm a pirate. Um, I'm <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm serious. I'm, I'm uh, uh, so for for me there is well, I don't care about protection really because um, things can get copied anyway. So much protection, little protection, really doesn't matter. Um, if things that if things want to get copied, then they will get copied. Okay, so um, and now to to talk uh, from a very different perspective is Melanie Thielker. She's the founder of Avenation, a uh, commercial grid. She's also an open sim core developer and has been one of the more active co contributors to virtual world software in general and open simulator in particular. She's a longtime Second Life resident and has been involved in a number of virtual world projects um, and has created her own spin of the open simulator software. Most recently. Um, she she has produced uh, a new content permission for OpenSim, an export permission, which eventually will make it is safer for content creators to distribute their content on uh, hypergrid-enabled grids while deciding for themselves whether the content can travel further or not. And uh, Melanie, can you talk about your about your background, especially in in how you feel about the content protection issue? Yes, um, as a matter of fact, um, even though you may think that uh, I'm completely and diametrically opposed to Vanish, that's not so. I believe that such content as what he's outlined needs to exist. It must exist, otherwise we would be uh, looking very bare. However, I, I don't believe that all content should be free because um, Vanish may have spoken from the standpoint of somebody who uh, creates content as a hobby or who uh, distributes content um, out of the goodness of his heart. That's all fine and well, but there are those of us who live 
of the creation of content, the intellectual property. Now, um, Vanish rejects the term content. A lot of people also reject the term intellectual property, believing that all ideas are free and that essentially all virtual objects are ideas. I can't subscribe to that. Virtual objects uh, represent a certain amount of time that's been invested in creating them and such time is worth money. So um, I believe that, cr uh, co uh, that protection for the creators of such objects is something that is very, very much needed, even though it may be optional. It can be optional on the grid level. A grid can declare that it uh, only allows free content and that anybody who imports content into that grid agrees that the content will be free and freely copyable. A grid can do the opposite, like Avination did, and say we protect content cre creators rights, we protect intellectual property, we proactively prevent or um, uh, copying or remove copies, we educate, we help. And um, of course that places a bit of a burden on us, but that's one that we should do gladly. We've uh, designed a permission system that is as secure as we, as, as we could made it, make it, and um, then we um, created the uh, long talked about but um, never done export permission bit. The way that came about was that I uh, made contact with the developer group of the Singularity Viewer and um, in a process that took quite a while to accomplish became a um, part of the team and able to um, make contributions to that viewer and have them accepted and put into the viewer and we discussed the export permission and the need for OpenSIM worlds, especially hypergrid enabled worlds, to have such a bit. So we created it. We created it in such a way that it's as flexible as OpenSIM itself. We love options. We really love options. We got hundreds of them, literally. Read OpenSIM defaults in e for a nice laugh. <laughs> So, um, for content cre um, creators, there needs to be a way to make sure that their content is not copied illegally. Now, uh, you're saying content will be copied if it wants to be copied, and yes, you are right. <laughs> that is actually true. There is no, no way to stop a determined, technically savvy person from copying something. Absolutely no way to do that. Anything that can be seen, displayed, downloaded, can be copied. However, there is a lot of what I call casual copying. This is copying by people who do not know the exact legal situation. People who believe that if they bought something in SL, for instance, they are allowed to export it because it's their property. It's like um, if you buy a piece of furniture and when you move you have to leave it because you only bought a license for that furniture in that apartment and people don't understand that. <laughs> so um, they actually copy the item believing that they are allowed to do so because they consider it to be physical property because it looks like physical property. Uh, um, I'm hearing here that there's no audio. <laughs> Um, I have a question um, uh, for you that's uh, it's been coming in uh, that, that I'm hearing a lot about, and that's that there's no content protection in OpenSIM at all. Could either of you briefly outline um, how content protection in OpenSIM differs from other virtual worlds, like say Second Life, and what tools are available for content creators, and how they differ? Uh, you know, there's sure. a, open sim is not a single place. There's actually different grids. Can one of you talk about that? Yes, it's been um, shown in a different um, session and also at the keynote um, that uh, people often equate open sim with OS grid. That is a common misconception. That is because uh, OS grid is the official testing place for open sim. But one has to see that open sim is a software that has a um, nearly infinite uh, configurability. So um, a grid can choose to load a permission module or no permission module. OpenSIM can be configured to be as secure as Second Life, which is just the same level of security as you have for, say, World of Warcraft content, which means the only way you can download it is by making an effort investing criminal energy. It's not something that is possible for the average user 
if things are configured to be airtight. However, it is possible. Anyone can download anything that can be seen, as I said already. But some OpenSIM installations have configured the system to have no permissions. Either that everyone is a god, or that there's just no concept of next owner permissions. So everything is full perm and stays that way. Now enter the hypergrid. When you go to a SIM that has permissions enabled, you take an item and hypergrid somewhere where there is no permissions enabled. You can then make copies, you can set the next owner permissions as you like, take the item and hypergrid back to where it came from. And you will have that item with full permissions to do with as you please. That is the danger of the hypergrid, which is what the export bit is for to prevent. Content creators in grids that have object security can now elect to not have the item exportable to prevent people to jump to other sims and um, change permissions on it. If an item is not exportable in the final version of this, it will not be able to put it in the suitcase, they will not be able to download it using viewer tools, and um, obviously they will not be able to um, have it in IAR or OAR files at the discretion of the region owner. So if you're, for instance, in a grid like Avination, and if Avination were already hypergrid enabled, and you were asking for an IAR of your inventory, then things that are not export enabled would not be part of that IAR. If you put them in the suitcase, they would not go in. And if you try to download them using the viewer tools export, they will not export. Any other thing that has the export set would do all three of these things. Uh, the word grid god and grid god powers comes up regularly. Is this something that anyone in OpenSIM can do? Or um, can you talk about the, the, the times when someone can give themselves god powers and, and reset permissions and, and do these other kinds of things? OpenSIM has several settings pertaining to god powers. First off, in the standalone or hypergrid standalone, the owner is implicitly a god and um, they can set it up so that even parcel owners are implicitly gods or they can turn off permissions altogether. In a gridded environment, no matter whether hypergrid enabled or not, there's additionally the concept of grid gods that it comes on top of these other concepts, which means that the grid owner and operator can designate certain people as gods and they will be gods on all regions. Unless the region system is federated like um, uh, OS grid or I believe um, metropolis grid where everybody can operate their own regions and then of course they can set allow grid gods to false in the config file if, if they don't want the grid operators to determine who has god mode in their sim. Regardless of that, permissions and god mode while they are linked, they're not the same thing. You can configure a sim not to have permissions enforced without anyone being god. You can configure a sim so that everyone is god, but you still have permissions enforced. It sounds really complicated. Uh, some yes, people, we love options. <laughs> some people, um, including um, uh, some of our audience members, are suggesting that maybe uh, it should be e easier to purchase content than to copy it for example, the iTunes or the Amazon DRM free model where you can buy music without DRM because hackers are going to hack anyway and the only thing DRM hurts is legitimate customers. Where, where do you stand at this? Do you think this is a direction that eventually virtual worlds will move to as well? Well, there is one problem with that. First of all, let me say it's a great concept. I use iTunes for those things that iTunes has. Um, of obviously, most of the things I buy are DJ mixes that I have to buy from other sites. But uh, where iTunes has it, yes, it is easier to use iTunes to buy something than it is to go and try find a torrent. I, um, I'm generally against pirating music, but um, I have um, seen how difficult it can be to find something that's actually clean. And um, how easy it is to buy something on iTunes for just pennies. So yes, the concept is great and it does work and iTunes actually makes pirating music harder than buying it. And it makes it so cheap that um, there's no reason not to. But in virtual worlds, uh, this doesn't work yet for lack of mass. 
even 80,000 concurrent users, even 8 million registered users will not all buy the same item. Now, uh, there are people who have made lots of money, thousands of US dollars per month on virtual content. I have uh, had the pleasure to know a few of those. They would not make that kind of money by pricing the items that low. So, um, because of that, the iTunes model will not yet work. But once the 3D internet really takes hold, and uh, this is going to be used by uh, not 8 million SL users, but by uh, 200 million internet users, by 800 million internet users. Uh, if we have people um, like Facebook has people, then that concept will work and it will come to pass. I can pretty much guarantee you that. For the moment, though, we have a situation where that's not the case and content creators need to, to charge more money to amortize the amount of work that they put in because of that. The casual copying, the, um, oh, you like this? Here, have a copy. Without thinking about it, has to be suppressed. I know DRM is not a, a total solution. I know DRM can be circumvented and will be circumvented. But it does eliminate a lot of that casual passing around of objects. Uh, can I comment mm -hmm. on that? Yes. Um, I, I don't agree. I have, um, in fact, I mean, uh, OpenSim Creations, for those who don't know it, is uh, similar in that it makes downloading and importing uh, items for OpenSim easy. I, I would argue easier than trying to get them through the hypergrid, but I mean, that's arguable. Um, I don't know if there's a market or not, but I do. I have always encouraged anyone who wants to try to set up their own um, shop on the internet and sell their stuff as a download for OpenSim. I have actually written a tutorial on how to do this using WordPress and a uh, little plugin for WordPress. Uh, it's really not hard to do. And for those who still don't want to do it themselves, I have set up a site called OpenSim-Shops.org where you can get well, where you can set up your shop uh, using my server. I don't charge anything for it. It's just for you to try and sell your own stuff if you want. Can you I, post a link to that uh, in local uh, chat? We are in local chat. Okay. OpenSim-shops.org. Now, here's a question about that. Uh, if you make a okay. store, you have yes. your content that you probably uh, exported using a viewer's export function or whatever, or you have just textures on there, and um, you, you put that up for sale. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes and buys it, imports it into, for instance, Second Life, mm -hmm. or Ivy Nation, a grid mm -hmm. that has a closed permission system. That makes them full perm owners and creators of the object. They can then put it in the store on that grid and resell it, possibly at a huge profit to people who don't know your, your website or where that comes from. They may be in violation of license terms attached to the item, of course, but they could do that. Is there any way to, that you are, uh, any steps you're taking to prevent that and uh, protect the rights of the actual creator for the, the, to that money, which they will not receive? Um, I find it always interesting that we who are in Second Live or OpenSim live in this little bubble where we always think about permissions and have to use the permission system to prevent people because it seems like the, the general assumption is that people are evil and you have to prevent them from doing evil stuff with your stuff, otherwise they will hurt you. I don't think that is necessarily true. And it works in, in general terms as well. If you buy something on iTunes, who's going to stop you for, from selling the album that you bought on iTunes? If you bought something from TurboSquid, who's going to, to stop you from importing the mesh into a second live and selling it there? Nobody is. The, yes, the, web the legal itself system is. Work. Yes, and the, the, the same legal system applies to OpenSim and Second Life. Unfortunately, it doesn't apply because an item that costs less, less than, let's say, less than one cent, you cannot go and um, sue for damages of 2,000 US dollars over this item. Like the, a they, song you'll be iTunes. laughed out of court. Well, the song is different. The music industry is different. They have a ton of money. And same, same for the movie industry. But, but OpenSystem creators 
and tell creators they don't have that. They do not have the financial breath to pull through a process, a process in court that will uh, cost them 2000 even though they may yield 3000 at the end. They, they just don't have the kind of money to sue. So that's where DRM comes in. It prevents them from having to sue too many people. Um, uh, I'm getting several questions in about people looking for content um, in OpenSim. Uh, Sean Emerald asks, my world is essentially empty because I'm not a builder. No one will sell me stuff. And I don't like to copy stuff found elsewhere because I might be copy-botted. I'd love to buy stuff. Uh, Tanya Souther asked, ever since I first got on OpenSim Grid, I've been looking for a Tigress avatar. I've never been able to. I've spoken to avatar creators, and the universal answer is the same. Why should they make stuff for open sim if they'll simply get ripped off and passed around? Real against the idea all you want, but the creators are the ones you have to convince, and they're not buying. Uh, how would you guys address this? Should I start? Oh, yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, probably. Um, I think it's a few more than me. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, open sim creations has currently. Oh, I don't even know. Uh, more than a thousand items for virtual worlds. So if your sim is empty, just go to the site, download what you want, and import it, and I'm sure your sim will be full in no time. Likewise, we have a forum there where, where people regularly post stuff that they would like to have made, and somebody else might see it and actually, you know, do it just for fun. So if you want a tigress, go there, ask for a tigress. Um, the question for the quality comes up all the time. Um, quality is all over the place, just in, in Second Live as well as in OpenSim Creations. You, you know, if you don't like something, don't download it. Well, um, but uh, what about uh, selling it to the creators? I mean, you say you have a thousand items, but um, well, I'm asking VR you, this, how many of those how many of those people who sell items to your website are people whose real life living is made creating virtual content? I don't really know. I don't know much about the people who post stuff on OpenSim Creations. I'm not really interested in their real life. Um, I know that at least a couple of them have do make some income with actually selling stuff for, for OpenSim. Um, but Making some income is one thing, but having that be your principal income, well, as it's possible know, in Second Life and other closed worlds. I don't know why the assumption is that only if you can make an income from it, you, you do create quality stuff. That is not, not the case. No, it's not the case. I, I, I agree. Other people make uh, quality stuff too. But obviously, those people who do it full time. Um, they have more experience and invest more time, and they expect a certain return. The, I do not think oh. that they can get that if they uh, sell it on a website to download and import into worlds uh, individually. I believe the markets for those are still in closed grids, and that's primarily a sell. Well, okay. I mean, you know, as you said, it's a marketplace, so I, I guess everybody needs to find their niche, and we'll see where the marketplace goes. Um. One of Indeed, our audience but that requires that content protection is in place. It needs DRM as an option. But no, I don't it. think so. I don't think so. There, there is no evidence to support, to support that. And there are lots of, of websites or lots of marketplaces who do just fine without any kind of DRM in place. Yes, but there are products that can be um, um, prosecuted in real life courts if they are stolen and that's not true for virtual clothing items for instances or prim geometries that make up furniture well um so you mean you you cannot like extend a dmca notice to every nation if you see something that you think is stolen from you of course, but that's because we do have DRM and support copyrights. That well, means if, I, if we get a DMCA, then we take it down. However, the person who has uh, sent the DMCA is not entitled to damages, and they don't have the money to sue the person who imported it for damages either, because it takes money to sue people. Well, uh, I can count on one hand the number of times that the, uh, the music industry actually sued people here, in, in my case, in Germany. And in the most cases, there aren't any damages being paid. Well, I know about the software industry, for instance. Um, they did sue someone uh, who I know, and um, they did so successfully. Yes, it happens. 
but it's just nothing that's feasible for uh, subsend content. Okay. Um, uh, somebody uh, in our audience mentioned um, the the reverse problem of content being acquired in OpenSim and sold in the Second Life marketplace because in Second Life Marketplace is where you have the users with the money who are buying stuff. Um, can either one of you uh, address that issue? It's just uh, a yes, scenario I that I put to uh, Vanish when I said somebody <laughs> downloads stuff there and puts it for sale yes. in Second Life or Ravination to make money with it. Um, I've, I've, seen, I've seen that happen. And I've seen people actually do download stuff from OpenSim Creations and sell it in, in Second Life. And then I've seen people download my own stuff and sell it in Second Life. And um, personally, I don't really, really care. Uh, the, the licenses I use for my items are such that they actually are legally able to download my stuff and sell it anywhere for any price they can. If they can really compete with me putting it on the web for free, then they deserve every dollar they get. Um, the same applies to a lot of other OpenSim Creations users. They choose licenses that are um, either for commercial use as well, so you know, commercial use means you can use this item and sell it, or, or they say, please don't sell it without really having any way to, you know, prevent you from selling it. So um, I guess it's a trust system, and some people break trust, and that's the world that we live in. Well, most people break trust, and most of them do it unwittingly. They don't know really? that they should not do things. Yes, the, uh, we see the world it all the time. People, than the one people, I people log into Avination. They go and uh, get a bit of money so they can upload. And the first thing they do is upload their second life appearance. So we see them change, we see things appear, we see uh, skins appear for Red Grave or whatever. We ask them. Um, where would you get that skin? And they say, I uploaded that. I said, where did you get it from? I got it from SL. You know that's illegal. No. Why would you upload it here? Because I, it's mine. I bought it. Then you have to start explaining. You have to educate them about copyright and about that the license that they bought for the content in SL doesn't transfer to Avination. You've got to delete the stuff and um, make sure that they promise not to do it again. And then you have to keep them on a watch list to see if they do it again. What if they come from a, from a country where this is actually legal? Um, it might be legal in that country, not legal on our surface. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's um, part of our terms of service. So, um, if somebody um, breaks our terms of service, is educated, then does it again, uh, and they are just no longer one of uh, the people we desire on our grid, and uh, we, we will remove them. Well, okay, okay. I mean, you can do your job whatever you wish, but that doesn't mean that they don't do it with one somewhere else. Of course, but that's why I'm saying it needs to be prevented everywhere. I don't think you if can do If a creator that. does not want their items to be free for all, they need to have a means to enforce that. Since the legal system doesn't give us any recourse um, here, we need to have DRM. The DRM, by the way, I saw that question fly by in chat, is server-side. It's based in a server code. It's not based in the item. So unlike un-CDs, I mean, many of you may know what an un-CD is, uh, the DRM does not um, adhere to the object. It's part of the grid, and the object does not become unusable just because the DRM is updated. Like, for instance, the export permission. The export permission doesn't make existing items unusable. Uh, they're just not exportable because we choose to have not exportable by default. But um, it doesn't make them unusable. It's different than um, CD for protection. Okay. Um, uh, Douglas Mack. Maxwell asks, um, he, he runs a uh, big grid for the Department of Defense. For those of us who use OpenSIM for serious business, we need an inability to acquire content cost effectively. We cannot just wait for some kind soul to accommodate us. And I'd like to weigh in personally on this because I became an unwitting pirate when I got a, a plant from a reputable freebie store. Um, the freebie store took the plant down when it was, they realized it was infringing. So they did the right thing. I still had a copy of the plant in my inventory, put it up online in my grid, um, 
posted a picture of it online and it, it created a lot of bad press for, for me and for my company. So uh, even though I did the right thing all the way through, like some of our audience members are saying, I have become extremely nervous about using content that's generally available on OpenSIM. Um, can you guys address this, this issue? Well, the situation is this. First of all, the good faith doctrine applies. Meaning if you bought something in good faith and you had no reason to suspect that the item is infringing and you have not been aware specifically that the item is infringing and the uh, seller has a good reputation, then you have acted in good faith and you are not required to do anything but take the item down and delete it once you do get knowledge of it being infringing. Of course, the press is a different story and uh, being uh, thrown about on the blogs as a copy botter is not a nice thing. But um, that it is something that um, neither the creators nor the grids nor the um, affected persons have any control over. But bloggers will blog, but bloggers will blog. Um, generally speaking, buying something from a freebie store like NSL, it is not legal to export it. Even if it's a freebie, even if it's full term, it's not legal to export it because the SLTOS forbid it. So it's only OpenSIM creations and sites like that where you can legally buy these things and I encourage you to do that and it will be legal and it will all be okay because it's the actual creators uploading things there. Don't buy it in a freebie store on some grid and then, um, then export it. Buy it from somewhere where it's actually licensed legally so you can use it. Um, uh, first of all, uh, you, you cannot buy anything in OpenSIM Creations. Everything is free. Okay, I'll I'll get it from there then. <laughs> but that was just a side note. I think the, the, the use case that is being discussed here is somebody make it's work for hire. That's the, the, the term that's being used for that. It, when you pay for pay someone to make something for you, and that is actually a pretty clear cut case. I mean, you go to somebody who is a reputable creator for OpenSim or Second Life, and you just tell them, please make my Tigress avatar, and I pay you uh, $1,549.60. And uh, the person makes the Tigress avatar, and you pay them the money. I think DRM has nothing to do in there. DRM has nothing to do in the process of uh, work for hire and the uh, delivery of those items. DRM has everything to do in protecting those items from then getting stolen by third parties. Uh, several people are asking about DR, uh, DRM and real licenses. Um, what about using licenses instead of DRM? Um, and uh, 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 yeah, can, can uh, you guys talk about that? Well, licenses can um, override those things that um, are otherwise statutory limits, meaning content is proprietary unless licensed more openly. If you license something that uh, to be CC, for instance, um, or if you license something to be BSD, fair alike, also such licenses, then uh, legally you are allowed to uh, export that content, import it elsewhere, use it anywhere. You have to give attribution when the license says you do, otherwise you do not. You can uh, sell the content if the license allows you to that or not. However, if you're using a privately owned service, the TOS of that service governs the transactions that you have for that service. So if somebody has something uploaded to SL that is uh, licensed as CC and the SL TOS says you are not allowed to download things you did not make, then the SL TOS governs. It still is not illegal to download it. You may get banned though and they would have just cause. Um, I. I am fully behind using real-life licenses instead of DRM. That is what we are using on OpenSIM Creations. That was a, is how I set up OpenSIM Shops. I have personally also uploaded stuff from other people onto OpenSIM Creations because these other creators uh, either made it publicly available and with a license that allows you to export it out, to copy it and share it somewhere else. Or because they just told me to do that. To do that, so uh, the licensing thing, in my experience, works much better than DRM, which are very unspecific and, well, as Melanie said, is only uh, limited to the grid that the item is on. 
Um, Lani Global, uh, who runs the uh, science fiction themed role playing um, region, Lani on OS Grid, says, so those of us who are content creators in OpenSim really don't have an expensive unauthorized copy enforcement. This is the same situation as images on a website. The best enforcement I've found is a listing in Second Life Marketplace. Simply list your product area as soon as you release it as an open sim. Then you're first to file for intellectual property purposes in a prime commercial market. And their takedown system is inexpensive, free for that market. I can't control the copying of my products. Uh, however, I can get takedowns. And I, and I do this by listing them in the commercial markets um, when I release them. Is this, is this a solution that you recommend for other uh, open sim based content creators? It's definitely something that they can do, listing the item in the Second Life marketplace, even if they don't intend to actually sell it in Second Life or don't expect there to be a market in Second Life. Yes, if the item is stolen from an open sim grid and subsequently imported into Second Life, that does make it infringing. Yes, the first to file rule does apply for copyright, and that means that they can prove that they have created the item first and um, they have uh, put it into Second Life first and they can get a takedown on these items, that is correct. The same thing goes for Avination, only um, it's not that you'd have to uh, list it on a marketplace because we don't have one by choice. We prefer to have live malls rather than uh, dead websites. Uh, however, you, if you bring the item into the world and have it for sale somewhere, then uh, you are also first to file with us and then uh, you can uh, send us a takedown notice. Now, we're not subject to the DMMCA, but we usually act according to it because it's the way of least resistance and it helps the content creators the most. Other um, grids may be similar, but this is a grid-specific thing. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm curious now. I'm sorry. Um, you say you're not subject to the DMCA. Um, first question is, what are you subject to? And the second is, why do you follow the DMCA if you're not subject to it? We are subject to copyright law, regular international copyright law, being UK based, and the DMCA, what's usually called the DMCA, is actually a specific provision, the so called DMCA safe harbor provision. The safe harbor provision is only a spelling out of something that has always been part of copyright, which is the uh, aforementioned good faith doctrine, meaning unless we know that there is something infringed, we are not guilty as long as once we find out, we take action. So um, that's basically the same procedure. We get sent DMCA requests on DMCA forms because people are not aware, US people are not aware that we may not be subject to that particular law and we don't have to work with that particular form. However, the form has all the data we need, so uh, we just go and process it as if we were. But we also honor formless requests. We also honor requests that um, specifically cite British law. We honor all requests, basically. As long as we can see that the creator is actually the legit creator, we are always on the side of the creator, never on the side of the thief. So how do you, how do you see that someone is a legit creator? Usually, what we do is if the item is on SL or on the SL marketplace, we can determine how old it is in SL. We use that as the indication of prior filing. Otherwise, we see when the item was created by the original creator versus when the item was created by the person who um, allegedly copied it. We also check okay. other sources if the complainant can name them. Okay, thanks. Uh, one of our audience members uh, has suggested, and I've heard this repeated uh, elsewhere multiple times this weekend, uh, is that the problem is you drive away the high-end creatives that could grow the use of this technology by not respecting their rights. This kind of stuff is killing virtual world potential for future use. The flip side of it is that the World Wide Web had no built-in protection for copyright creations, still really doesn't for images, for text, uh, for and for many different file types, and th this did not hinder its growth. Um, it was it's fully the, the internet is pretty much li li license based as opposed to DRM based. Um, how do you guys address this growth potential question? It's already been addressed twice, actually, <laughs> saying that um, the internet and uh, generally the real world 
is indeed license-based, but licenses need to be enforced. Licenses are enforceable to the courts, which means that a certain value has to be attached to an item. Now, if you have an image, for instance, you can attach a value of 2,000 US dollar for it, then you can sue someone who infringes that for 50,000 US dollars based on the supposed number of people who may have seen the image on their website. And you will get that award or a, maybe 20,000, but we're talking about amounts of money that are sufficiently large that you can pay the lawyer out of the ward. This is not so for virtual worlds, because of the low price of virtual items, which is uh, generally uh, seen as being um, the official low price, because that's the sale price of the item. Uh, it means that uh, anything that you do in terms of lawsuits about virtual items can happen only in small claims court. Small claims court limits the awards to uh, amounts that may not, may not make it possible to uh, pay the high-powered lawyers that are needed to win such a case. They, those would be landmark rulings and they may need to go up to the instances and um, that is just not going to happen for a um, 0.012 pence pair of virtual pants. <laughs> Um, the question was about the quality of the items and driving away the people that make the, the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. you you're not driving away the people who make the good stuff by protecting their rights. Well, quite the I, opposite. I think that's quite an, no, I'm, I mean, I think that's quite an arrogant stance to say that I'm I'm a creator and I'm I'm better than the ones who make free stuff. Um, what we've seen on the internet is that. People voluntarily create much, much, much more stuff um, than than we had pre-internet from all those so-called professionals who who did it for pay. Um, YouTube <laughs> is the biggest TV channel, I guess, that we've ever had on the planet, and people make it make make videos for it for free. I don't think this is going to change, and I don't think it's going to be any different in OpenSim. Have you never posted a YouTube video? I have, <laughs> I have, never seen I have the posted monetization the options, the ad options that you have when you yeah, post. Yeah, but they did not always because have them. You choose not to use them doesn't mean that other people don't. Most people monetize their videos as soon as they get popular. If the people don't monetize it, then YouTube will. But uh, yes, um, this way, this way or that, YouTube is a business, and it's big business. Don't be mistaken. It's not all nice people making all free stuff for everyone. YouTube's big business, and yes, YouTube also has copyright protection. There are so many music videos on YouTube that are not allowed to be there. Uh, for some countries, it's been negotiated that they can be shown. But for instance, one country that's been very, very obstinate um, um, against. Uh, allowing internet distribution of uh, music co content is Germany. Uh, when I'm in Germany and I, I open YouTube, 80% uh, of the time when I'm looking for music video, I get a, uh, this country's, uh, this, this video is being blocked in Germany for GEMA purposes, whereas when I'm in the UK, I can open the video just fine. So uh, you see, DRM comes into it, and so does business. Uh, that's not really DRM, is it? And of course, it's DRM if they uh, don't play, play it in a country where it's not, not licensed. And they use technical means to prevent that. That's the DRM. That's exactly what DRM is. You're okay. talking about DRM as in terms of DRM being embedded in music files, of watermarking and things like that. But that is just one sub-aspect of DRM. Well, fair enough. Uh, yesterday we heard a presentation about a Kitely multi-tig grid marketplace, and there are several other multi-tig grid marketplaces as well. Do you see this as a, uh, another potential solution for content creators looking for a centralized place to post copies for legal, per post the content for legal purchases that uh, people can get to, and also as a way to prove their, their authorship of the content? There are two technical approaches to the uh, multi-grade marketplace. There's the one that's used by Kitely and some others where the uh, content is delivered into one of the worlds where you can go pick it up, then you can take it elsewhere via hypergrid. Expert permission is a vital part of that and the system is definitely something that is uh, viable. The other one is a con content delivery system that's called Double the Dutch and it's done by Spot on 3 d Apparently they are based in such a way that you upload the content to each grid individually and then have magic boxes there and just the 
the central go-to place. I believe there may also be Karyama, who tried to do something similar. I don't know if they're still around. But in that case, again, the DRM protection and protections of the grids where the stuff is uploaded to apply. So um, those, those marketplaces are a good place to find things, but if somebody uploads something that is stolen there, or somebody steals something that is uploaded there and brings it to another grid or re-uploads it to another marketplace, you still have the infringing problem, you still have the problem of content that is illegal and needs to be taken down, you still have the whole shebang. It's not like it makes things any easier or different, it's just different ways of distribution. Uh, if I sell a CD in a store and the CD has no DRM and I make a copy of the CD to give it to my friend, it's not fundamentally different from me downloading a file off of um, iTunes that has no DRM, putting it on a memory stick and giving it to a friend. It's a different distribution path, it's a different um, point of sale, but it doesn't change the facts. The, right um, now, the only fresh approach that I've seen is actually Vanish's website, which is um, a place that I would call a safe place to get stuff to import into grids and not get into hot water. <laughs> that and Linda yeah, Kelly. And we don't have DRM or the DMCA. That's <laughs> quite an achievement. <laughs> um, uh, somebody uh, asked um, about reverse engineering, uh, Sean Emerson asked, if if he can't buy a particular content, but wishes he could, if he just observes what it looks like and reverse engineers it from scratch, is that legal? Um, there are legal requirements as to how close or how far away the result has to be. Definitely, first of all, many people go and um, duplicate the prim geometry but steal the textures. That's, of course, just as illegal as using a viewer tool or uh, another ripping tool to uh, also duplicate the geometry. Those people who can make significant changes to the textures so that they become a work in their own right rather than being a derivative or straight-out plagiarism, those people usually are better at creating things than they need to be to make the item themselves without copying someone else's design. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at Samsung versus Apple, oh well, you go figure. <laughs> it's, it's always easy to copy something than create something from, from well, like invent something from scratch. Uh, that is actually how creativity works. You never, nobody really creates something out of thin air. We always stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, all right, it, it, we're getting close to um, the end point for this talk. Um, are there any other questions that I haven't asked? Um, oh, oh, yes, there's one that's sitting right on top. Um, uh, one of our in-world listeners asked, um, what about people who, who are investing their own money in creating their own web server and setting up a commercial grid and renting out land? They have to get money to, to at least cover their costs. Um, and in world, of course, in world marketplaces are a great way to to uh, rent land to merchants. And you, it, it, it's, this can be really hard to do if content protection isn't in place. Can you address that? I don't understand what the actual question is here. Um, I, as a, well, as a creator. I, I, it's really not my business to tell you how to make, how to get back the investment that you put into your grid. Uh, that's that's not my problem. Sorry. <laughs> I saw a much more interesting thing that I would like to mention. Um, scrolling by me, uh, this was Douglas Maxwell again asking about certificates. This is something that um, is actually um, it's been looked into and it's not been discarded. It's just been determined and it's too complex to do for the current technological level, but um, certificate-based authentication for the hypergrid is something that um, I'm definitely looking at and um, doing the same thing for content would then also be possible. That, that would allow content to be digitally signed and um, it would also allow content to be um, fit with an ACL that allows where to take it and where not. At least with participating grids that would give an extra level of security both for the buyer who would know that his item is authentic and for the seller 
who can be sure that the item cannot be copy botted without it being clearly visible. Okay, and we're coming to the end of our lot of time. Uh, Vanish and Melanie, would you like to give a, any final statements before we close this out? Go forth and prosper. <laughs> Melanie? Well, um, I believe everything has said, so um, I'm just hoping that everybody here has taken something away from this um, sometimes quite heated discussion, and um, I wish you all a good evening, morning, or day, or whatever, wherever you are. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for coming thank and talking you. about this uh, this sometimes contentious issue and thank you everyone in our audience here and streaming on the, and the streaming audience on the web uh, for um, for coming and listening and asking your questions coming up next in this same presentation area I will be giving a talk about the numbers about the, the growth of the hypergrid the growth of the open sim and, um, and then later on tonight we're going to have some social activities check out uh, the conference website for all the details and locations. And again, thank you very much. And this concludes um, this panel. Thank you.